Path of Fire was announced yesterday. That's the second expansion for Guild Wars 2. It's coming five years after the vanilla release. And for the first time, much unlike the first expansion, Heart of Thorns, the devs have been able to go away for a long period of time and develop it in tandem with Living World updates. So it's set to have a hell of a lot of content. Not necessarily so much feature revamping and feature bloat like Heart of Thorns had, but just straight up additions to the game and in mass quantities. So Path of Fire was announced yesterday and it's been kind of a funny day because unlike with Heart of Thorns where the announcement came and then very little else and then we had many months of a slow trickle of information, week by week we got each elite specialization. This time they gave us a huge amount, pretty much everything all at once. Yesterday was definitely, as far as I've been active in the community, and that's about seven years now, the biggest singular day for information dumping that this franchise has had, that I've seen. It was everything really that we got as a slow trickle from Heart of Thorns, all condensed down. And so on this video, I wanted to give you guys a top level overview of all the big things that were announced about the expansion so that those who are only kind of casually following can kind of get a grip on things. So let's start off with the trailer. Those following my channel very closely might have already seen it in the week, but shh, it's fine. We'll watch it again and we'll analyze it very shortly. Commander, there's something I have to tell you. I went into the mists after my sword, but I found something else. Refugees are pouring in from Alona. If he kills an Elder Dragon, Tyria will never recover. Stand in the glory of Balthazar's light. And so there you go, that's the uh, Path of Fire trailer, we've seen it a few times. In addition to this, there are individual trailers that have released for all the Elite Specializations, and there was a big launch show that the devs did in celebration of the expansion that explained in much higher detail many of the other features. They also launched a website, so uh, let's go top level here. Uh, they launched a website talking about how to get it, obviously. Um, so they did something very different on this for Heart of Thorns. Uh, yes, they've done an ultimate package again, so for me over here in the UK, this is $69.99. Yes, they did a deluxe package again. This is similar to what they did with Heart of Thorns, and I actually think is really boring. The ultimate package is just cheap gems on top of stuff you were getting anyway. That's not ultimate arena net. Also, once again, they have failed to give us a physical collector's edition. They haven't returned to those early rich traditions we once upon a time had. So, I think they could have done a lot better on these two packages here, but obviously there is some value to them if you think you're going to be playing the game a reasonable amount. But uh, what's interesting is if you look over here, standard, they did do the budget expansion route. Uh, they did not give this full price like they did with Heart of Thorns. And uh, generally speaking, I was very worried about this. I feel like if you're going to announce your expansion, you should sell it for full price and show to your audience that, hey, this is a full price product. This thing is set to be bigger than Heart of Thorns, and yet they're selling it for cheaper. And I think to the really casual and lay viewers, uh, and people that are maybe on the fringes of Guild Wars 2, they might see that lower price and think, oh, it's not even that big of a revamp. More of the same, just small stuff, and dismiss it out of hand. 
Uh, that was my opinion. Uh, generally speaking, though, in the community, everyone's loving this. Who doesn't like a cheaper product? And obviously, if you are in a position like many of us in the community are, of knowing that this looks to be pretty good, of already knowing you're going to enjoy mounts and stuff, uh, this price is going to be uh, wonderful to you. I think it also ties a lot into some controversy back with the Heart of Thorns release, which charged full price and didn't allow people to have a separate upgrade price in their view, and that really ticked a lot of people off. I think that that's essentially what the devs are doing here. Interesting twist as well many of us expected that when we bought path of fire we would get the core game and the previous expansion all rolled in together that isn't true but you can get them both at the same time for like a bulk discount so there's some interesting business model decisions there uh, some people have thought that's them going back against their word that oh they promised us we'd get it all at once they never actually said that they said that they would always offer a single price for everything if you wanted to go for it but they weren't going to force people into it. And so that explains this £25. And uh, hey, we will see how that works out for the devs. Should be uh, pretty cool. Okay, so uh, moving on. They've got the trailer, which you guys saw a second ago earlier. The tagline for the expansion, The Fire God Returns. Uh, I actually really like that tagline. It seems to sincerely take the emphasis away from the Elder Dragons. Again, if you guys remember, the equivalent trailer... For Guild Wars 2 in 2012 and Guild Wars 2 Heart of Thorns, both of these equivalent trailers hinted at the respective Elder Dragon. This one doesn't. It's got a little bit of branded stuff and crystal stuff in it. The Elder Dragon itself doesn't appear, and I like that mystery. It's kind of shrouded. Uh, so they go on, and they say, Terrier and Flames, Path of Fire is the second expansion for the award-winning Guild Wars 2. As the balance of magic comes undone, lead your allies in the hunt for the arrogant god Balthazar, whose scorched earth campaign against the Elder Dragons threatens the very existence of Tyria. A divine insurrection. He Humanity has worshipped the six gods for centuries, even as their prayers went unanswered. Now the god of war, Balthazar, has made an unexpected return, only to reveal himself as the ruthless manipulator with little regard for mortal life. After thwarting the first stage of this catastrophic plan to destroy the Elder Dragons, you must find and stop him before he sets the foundations of the world ablaze. The Forgotten Land, Balthazar threatens the Crystal Desert and adjoining Kingdom of Alona with his forged legions. Explore vast new maps filled with magic drenched desert plains, ancient temples and ruins, and beautiful oases. Uncover the secrets of Tyria's history and discover the fate of the Alonan people after years of silence. Now, I've played the expansion already, and we do get the Crystal Desert, but yes, you get Alona too. Not all of Alona, but you get as far south as the Desolation and Vabi. So that's incredibly exciting. This is something that uh, some of us knew for a long time because of leaks and I kind of had to avoid talking about it uh, for several months there. But that is very true and that's incredibly exciting. So next we've got mounts. Mounts are entirely keying into the mastery system we saw with Heart of Thorns. It's like they saw that the best mastery was gliding and they just doubled down, tripled down, quadrupled down into gliding. They're, all the masteries are to do with mounts now, which is similar but much, uh, you know, expanded as a feature. It's a feature they've had a dedicated team working on for at least 18 months, probably two years, just to get it right. So here, mounts are more than a speed boost. They're a whole new way to move through the world of Tyria. Unlock and train your companions using the mastery system and explore freely by leaping across can canyons, bounding up high cliffs, and skimming over water and quicksand. The mounts are a really interesting one uh, because before this expansion came out and there were hints that there might have been mounts, many people didn't seem to understand why it works for Guild Wars 2. It's again, it's got waypoints and lots of mass teleportation. How does that work? Well, it works the same way that gliding worked for the Heart of Thorns maps. These maps are way bigger than the old ones and they have fewer waypoints and they are deliberately designed to work with mounts. So similar to how gliding enabled you to access new areas of the jungle, mounts will enable you to access new areas. Like, it's built into the terrain. There is quicksand that is you cannot pass until you get a specific mount, and you train up its abilities and tame it in such a way that you can get across those areas, like quicksand or long jumps and so forth. So as to the question of mounts elsewhere in the game as well, where they are going to be less useful, having mounts in the core maps, having mounts in the jungle maps, well, you can do that. They already announced that that's perfectly okay, and when the game comes out, you do get mounts all over the world. It's just they'll thoroughly shine in uh, the new desert regions. Similarly, that goes the other way as well. If we go back in time, so with Heart of Thorns, anybody who's explored the jungle from the previous expansion has unlocked bouncing mushrooms and gliding and stuff. That stuff also works in the desert. That doesn't necessarily you'll meet, you'll find loads of new hawk wallows and mushrooms and stuff in the desert because people could be in the desert without any access to that whatsoever. But you can do it. So if you 
you own both expansions, you can jump up a cliff on one mount, jump across a giant gap on another mount, skim across some quicksand before then gliding back down to where you originally came from because of Heart of Thorn stuff. Very, very, very interesting. Massive expansion setup, finally, at the end here. Elite specializations. Customize your character with new elite specialization for each of your favorite professions with a new variety of play styles, weapon choices, and traits to choose from. We obviously knew this was going to be coming. Elite specializations are a huge part of expansion value. Now, they do have a secondary page which dives into more detail on each thing. I think it's worth having a look at. It's got all these pretty animations and things in it. I think it's at least worth looking at. So for mounts, for example, here are the four mounts. We'll be talking about these in upcoming videos. Videos. But at the very least, here's the elite specialization. Here's our image with all of the guys standing side by side. Uh, very nice. So the list is the engineer becomes the hollow smith, the uh, guardian becomes the firebrand, the thief becomes the dead eye, a sniper. The Warrior becomes the Spell Breaker, a love child between Guild Wars 1 Denial Mesmer and Warrior gameplay in Guild Wars 2. The Mesmer becomes the Mirage, a very deceptive character that can hide in plain sight as a clone. Uh, we've got the Necromancer who becomes the Scourge, who's heavy condition damage, but also potentially a support playstyle uh, that summons all these little sand shades and things. We've got the Elementalist, which is bonkers, adds over 40 new skills, the equivalent of like a huge chunk of a, an entire profession uh, that mul has multiple attunements at once. We've got the Revenant who becomes the Renegade and channels the legendary Char hero Carla Scorchraiser. And lastly, the Ranger who becomes the Soul Beast. And at last, a lot of people have been looking for this one, a petless Ranger. You could take the pet away and imbue that power into yourself. And that's a huge change for Ranger, as you guys know, because so much of Ranger design revolves around a pet and the Soul Beast loses it. There are new pets in the desert as well, by the way, just like the jungle head. So uh, those are the elite specializations, um, sort of in a nutshell. This page as well down here uh, has kind of minor features. So it talks a bit about rewards here, and there's a page about that. A new system that's coming into the game called Bounties. Not a major feature bloat thing like Heart of Thorns had, but uh, kick off challenging boss events whenever you're ready to take them on. Anyone can join in on the hunt. Um, and then lastly, Guild Halls. No mention of Guild Missions. Halls itself I'm a bit disappointed in. I find it a real shame that that is not on the main page of the website as a big selling feature. If you remember all the crazy hype at Heart of Thorns for Guild Halls coming in, and now they're not even confident enough to put it on the main website, but it is a part of the expansion, and I hope that they do some good stuff with that. And then other things are, you know, we, we take for granted, but will be there. There will be new story, there will be access to Season 4 of The Living World with no content drought. In just two months, they're going to be dropping that. So it's end of a season, two months, for an expansion and the two months for the live updates to come again and some people have also been asking you know for the heart of thorns version of this page we had raids why are there no raids on here why is there no fractals on here what about pvp and world versus world stuff and all of that is coming with the expansion too there will be new raids there will be new fractals but those are live updates that they are continuously perpetually putting in the game if you haven't following guild wars 2 at all over the past 12 months you will know this since after the bulk of Heart of Thorns came out, four Raid Wings have come out. They've added three new Fractals and they've had big revamps like automated tournaments and a new Legendary for World vs. World and all that kind of stuff. That's just all perpetually going in the game now and you only have to wait two months for that to start back up. Uh, you might think well, there's no new Legendary weapons listed here with the potatoes. Yeah, but two months after it comes out, that, that just continues rolling. No content drought is huge. And I think that that, even though the core expansion for Path of Fire is set to be so much bigger already, I think that that no content drought is the true shining point on this expansion. No content drought means that Season 4 is just going to be longer, straight up more episodes than Season 3 was. Because Season 3 missed out on the first 9 months, this one won't miss out on the first 9 months. As to the size of the new maps and the amount of story and stuff like that, uh, I attended a media event where I got uh, access to information. Uh, the current game director, Mike O'Brien, said specifically, and he seemed to be talking about in terms of content area, not necessarily length of story, but more about explorable zone size. He said of the amount of content that at launch, Path of Fire would be equivalent to Everything Heart of Thorns had at launch, which was four maps, plus all of Season 3, which was another six maps. So he's suggesting that we're getting about ten maps worth of playable space, built into five, because the maps themselves are huge, uh, immediately at release. 
And then two months later, we'll be getting new maps again and new stuff again and so on and so on and so on with Living World in immediately rolling out. So really crazy stuff. Path of Fire is set to start out on a very strong foot. This is the fruits of Heart of Thorns paying off. Heart of Thorns was all about expanding the feature base and uh, paving the way for Guild Wars 2's future. And Path of Fire is the big content drop that a lot of us have been looking for since 2012. It's not measly little Living World Season 1 updates. It's not rare and very short Season 2 updates. It's not uh, a hamstrung expansion because it had to focus on so much feature stuff and be rushed and it has content droughts around it. It is a huge amount of content going into the game on September 22nd, so in an incredibly short period of time. So those are the key points about Path of Fire. There is another big one that I don't think is on the website. There's going to be a playable demo as well really soon, in a couple of weeks, I think, or something like that, that's open to everyone, even people who are on the fence. You don't have to already be monetarily invested in the expansion to go for it. So uh, that's something to look out for. Uh, it's not even like we've got a month and a half of just waiting around with nothing at all. There's going to be playable stuff in the meantime. Crazy, absolutely crazy day. Do you understand? what I said at the start of this video now that this was a massive information dump it took us months to get to this point for the previous expect and here it all is in a single day uh, so join me next time guys for an analysis of that trailer you watched at the start of the video where we'll talk more specific terms about exactly what we see and then I'm hoping to dive much more deeply into each of the elite specs and all the trailers I have dev interviews to come oh there's a lot to put out Thanks very much for watching, guys. I hope you've been enjoying, and I'll see you shortly.